Hey everyone, um, how's it going? So welcome to today's Shuttlebyte session. Um, I'm Josh, I'll be the one who's um, doing the tutorial today. Um, so if you don't know who I am already, um, I do the technical content for Shuttle. So I do most of the articles, I handle most of the social media. You might have seen some of the Twitter memes that we've posted, um, that's all me. So yeah um so today we are going to talk about error handling in rust now um error handling is quite an important topic as you all know um you know error handling reduces production errors it helps you debug your code faster and so on and so forth share my screen here here we have a basic hello world program which we will implement a type that implements the error trait so if we just go onto the rustlang docs um trait so it'll say here there are a bunch of um methods that are accepted by the trait so what this means is that we can provide a source a description a cause and a provide function here. So let's have a look at what this means for us as developers. So let's say we have, I don't know, a struct called my error. And then we have a message and I don't know, a cause, I guess. So here, uh, we just have a blank struct that has nothing on it. Uh, we might want to implement the debug macro. Uh, so what this does is when we, for example, if we need to debug the struct, um, it will allow us to print it out. So let's instantiate this struct and then print it. So let my error equals my error message my message my calls calls and then print line my error and then under this we're just going to run our program expected string oh the demo guards aren't looking too fondly on this today i'll go run so here it says my error uh, with the message my my message and then the cause is my cause. So later on, um, if we need to debug exactly what type it is, then we can do that by applying the colon question mark notation within this print line macro. So what what does implementing the error trait look like for us? Well, if we do this, implement standard error module error for my error and then can't go run it again. Oh, look, it requires debug and display. So what that means is that this also requires the display trait. So all this means is that it is printable as a string without the debug macro. So it'd look like this if we had implemented the display trait. Come on, Emacs. All right. So let's have a look at just implementing the, oh, that's the wrong one. Okay, right, now we've got the right one. So let's quickly implement the display trait, uh, which additionally also allows us to convert this struct to a to a string right so let's do impler oh let's actually import this at the top first use standard formats and then formats display for my error so format format so this takes a reference of self, 
And then as well as that, it takes a formatter with a nondescript lifetime results standard. I think that's it. Oh no, should be, should be FMT result. Right. So here we can just write, uh, F, I don't know. And then let's see, self dots message self dot cause. So what's happened is here, we've just defined what we want the, uh, the program to output when it turns this into a string. So if we now remove this debug notation from the bottom, we'll see here that it no longer puts out the my error type. It just has my message, my cause. So how is this relevant for us? Um, well, it's relevant because when we want to declare that something can be an error, then this is the trait, the, the behavior that we need to implement. So, um, how is this useful? So if we just go into quickly one of our favorite libraries, Axim to response, I believe this should be it. No, that's not it. That also isn't it, but Nevertheless, um, so the reason why this is important is because, for example, you know, the compiler needs to know that it can be an error. So obviously this can also be used in a function. So, so let's set a f function that does a thing. I don't know, uh, no return type and then my error. If true, return my error um, message failed cause undefined. I mean, undefined in Rust, not really a <laughs> not really a thing, I guess. But here we are, and then at the end here, we can just return. Okay. So this okay thing just means the result returned okay, but we're not returning anything. So here we just need to put a unit value. So here, if we try to do a thing and then, I don't know, unwrap it and then we try to run it. Now say here, chord result unwrap on a error value, my error because we told it to return an error up here. So that kind of sucks. Um, so let's fix this very quickly. So we can just quickly do this and then it'll be okay again. But I think one of the things that can happen with this is that it might be, you know, a, a little bit too much. For example, I don't know, you might have to do this else return error, my error and so on and so forth. Right. Um, you know, this can be a little bit unidiomatic depending on, you know, how you feel about it, because you might have to do like five or 10 of these, and then it can be a huge pain, especially if you have to chain operations. Um, so here, what we can do is actually just return an error, my error type again, and then just turn this unwrap into a question mark, which will then return my error if it fails. So turn error. Um, you can leave the implement standard error error block and it just works. Yes. Yes, you can. Um, so the reason why you can is because if we just go back quickly onto this. So what this says is that these are all provided methods. 
Now, when you use provided methods in a trait, what that means is that the traits has already defined it for you. So if we just go in the source here, so here you can see there's already a, there's already like um, a definition for the function here. But if for example, the method had a semicolon at the end of it, that means we're leaving it up to the user to decide how to implement it. Um, hope, hope. I hope that makes sense. But of course, if you want to, you can um, you can of course re-implement the functions. It's just that they've added idiomatic um, implementations of of the functions already. Where's this? Oh, I forgot to add. Okay, at the end. Cool. So let's try running this very quickly. Yes, it works now. There's a couple of crates that we can use to help us along with this. So let's have a quick look at um, two crates. So if we use um, cargo add. So I'll take a quick look at anyhow, which is one crate that can be quite helpful, and air, which is a fork of anyhow that adds onto it and also has interrupt. So you, you can use anyhow, but not air, but you can also use air with anyhow, depending on what your needs are. So here, if we just quickly add anyhow results, so here we can use results and then here we literally don't even need to do anything. So we can use or we could use just the anyhow macro, which will automatically return an error of type anyhow error. So uh, anyhow, so let's just try this out very quickly. Uh, and a question mark. Oh yeah, I need to also just add it very quickly to the bottom. Cool. So here we'll just say uh, bailed which is in reference to this line here. So bail um, automatically causes us to panic, return the error, and then the function's done. But if we take that line out and then use cargo run again, it will return the error and then it will print out the error down here. Or maybe not. See if the demo gods will be happy with this one. Yeah, there we go. So. Here, we we can just use the anyhow macro to do, you know, we can print out whatever we want. It will use print line syntax. So if we need to, for example, insert, you know, a variable in there, it will also really help. Um, so air kind of works the same way. So air also has compatibility with anyhow. So we can also do this and it will work. So air has a nice thing where it also gives us a backtrace um, to where it errored at. So line 20 is this function here, which is great for us because, you know, when you, when you find an error, you want to get to the bottom of it. It gives us exactly where the backtrace leads to, which is great. So now that we're, Done with this, we can also have a look at the the air docs, which also talk about the report type that air puts out as well. Um, so this kind of this kind of builds on the box dynamic error type, but it also adds some extra trait differences. So we need the error to be thread friendly via send and sync, as well as their static lifetime. Um, reports also guarantees backtracing and is represented as a narrow pointer. Um, so this is something that's quite helpful. Um, you know, if you guys need a simple error handling library, 
that you know um you might you might not want to do full error handling because it's a baby project that you've worked for maybe two days on you don't think it's gonna make it to full production or it's just a side project um air and anyhow are two libraries that i'd really recommend so moving on from this let's talk about how to you know error handle in a web application so if we exit the shell then here we'll just create a new project very quickly uh shuttle test yep yep Axum. Nope. Cool. So if we go in here, we've already got a basic um, setup. So if we open a new buffer, then create a new file called errors, and then import it in here. So web frameworks normally have their own responder trait that will also take anything that can be converted into a error type so here on the left hand side we can use a function that takes the inter response trait as a type response right so do results input into response input into response um and then, and then we can do the thing um but generally speaking this can be not very helpful because inter response actually requires that all of your error types are the same or that your okay responses are the same so for example if you if you return a string in one part then you need to return a string in the other parts where your function returns successfully, for instance. So here we can actually implement into response for our error type that will then be able to be used in the handler. So let's do this very quickly. SQL, I don't know, forbidden, unauthorized, and then we'll just do this into response implementation response into response HTTP status code and then we'll it takes self because it consumes the body of the request so we need to match self or let res equals match self and then we here we just use um pattern matching status code internal server error SQL error within unauthorized so here um okay I don't know oh yeah okay and then rose start into response here so here we've just declared an enum with some variants and then implemented into response for API error. Now, when you implement into response on the Axum framework, you don't actually need to implement the enum, sorry, the error trait for the type. Um, this is mainly because API error gets recognized as implementing into response. So therefore it's is declared as having behavior for being able to be turned into a HTTP response. So therefore, Axum will automatically declare that it's okay to use as an error type. So here we can use API error and then use errors, API error, right? Cool. Uh, API errors is private. Should fix that very quickly, I think. Yeah, cool, fix itself. Okay, status error, status code, okay. 
and then we'll just do a quick import up here. Right. So we've done this and you know, that's okay and all. Um, but what about, for example, you know, when you have an SQL error from the SQLX library, right? You, I mean, you know, you could implement from T. Um, so in this case, be from SQLX error for API error and then do the function. Um, but there's a couple of things um, to keep in mind here. One is that, for example, if you have 10, like, enum variants here, each one having its own, you know, internal variable, then this can get quite long. Um, so, so here we'll just say, we'll just add SQLX here for the purpose of cargo add F on time to cure rusted s postgres that should fix itself now whenever it wants to work i guess so here we can also make use of the this error crates so with this error we can go over here and then import it and then uh derive debug and then error here from the this error crate and then what we can do is we can actually just use the from attribute macro to avoid this. And then we need to add an error message here, which will automatically implement the display um, trait. So we don't need to do it manually. And then here we could, it also accepts formatting. So down here we can use unauthorized as well, or forbidden, I guess. So this is really helpful because for us, um, implementing errors can, you know, it's not difficult, but it saves a lot of lines of code, um, which is quite helpful for us because obviously, you know, code readability, maintaining code, um, is really important for, you know, if you're working in a team and you know, your team's complaining that, oh, you know, we have too many lines of code in this file. What should we do? Well, we can cut it down with this crate. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that using this will automatically convert all enum variants to this error. So if you want more custom behavior, you have to be quite careful with regards to making sure you have the right enum variant. So I think that's it really in terms of everything that there is to cover. Um, as you can see, error handling in Rust is really not that. It's, it's a subject that there's a lot to cover, but once you've got the hang of it, it's very useful because you can do things like propagating errors, um, you know, using the question mark constructor that takes from T for any kind of error type, um, which is great. Thanks for watching everyone. It's been really awesome. Um, so in terms of next steps, we are going to hold our Discord Q&A at the link in the banner. Um, if you wanna join us for the Q&A, uh, feel free. And yeah.